Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Thursday, August the 4th. The year's 2022. Let's talk trading. Reasons to focus on money, part four with Walmart. As always, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and different from Walmart's. Walmart. Uh, let's see, where do we leave off by talking about money? <laughs> well, we, we've been uh, hitting this pretty hard this week, and, uh, which is good because, you know, why are we doing this? You know, we're, we're doing this to go and make money. <laughs> you know, at least I am. Right. You know, uh, and now, you know, I had hinted at this the other day, and I'll, I'm going to hint at it again. You need to make a decision. Are you doing this for the purposes of making money, to make a living? Or are you doing this because it's a hobby? Right. And that's going to affect differently how you do things. Because if you're looking at this as a hobby and, you know, hobbies cost you money. Hobbies don't make you money. You know, you, you may get lucky where your hobby turns into a business where you make a lot of money. But for the most part, you know, hobbies cost you money. I mean, I, I, Kiro, you know, I like to go and raise chickens. Okay. <laughs> and those suckers out there, they, they don't, they, they're not making me very much money. You know, yeah, I sell some eggs, you know, you know, at, you know, in the street, you know, and whatever, but I'm not making really very much money off of those things. I'm doing it because it's fun to go and take care of them, watch them, you know, go and breed them, go and do all the things that, you know, you can do with chickens, you know, and just uh, watching different breeds and everything else. They, to me, that's fun. I mean, some people would say I'm crazy, you know, they're just a bunch of stinky little birds, you know, <laughs> but, but the thing is, you know, uh, that's for me, that's a hobby. I enjoy doing it. Yes, it costs me money, you know, and so I look at that totally different than, for instance, one of my neighbors, you know, just uh, just r right across the street from me, you know, he's gone. On the other hand, he's got something like twenty five thousand birds. You know, Holy he's not cow. Doing, <laughs> exactly. That's not a hobby. <laughs> that's gone. That's gone another step where it's no longer a hobby. That's it. That, that's a business. He's trying to make money off of that. And so his approach to doing things and my approach are two totally different things. I'm out there just trying things, messing around with things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, you know, experimenting, even taking things where people said they didn't work, trying them anyway, you know, I'm doing that. What is he doing? Yeah, John's out there and he's out there, you know, uh, as my, my grandson calls him Farmer John, but Farmer John's out there and he's doing what he knows works. Okay, because at the end of the day, what he has to do is every day, uh, you know, uh, a truck come by, comes by and picks up all the eggs that got laid. Right. Okay, and that, that's what he's doing. You know, he's got every day he's got to go and get those eggs picked up, and he's got to make sure there's eggs to be picked up. You know, and he's got to make sure those eggs are in a certain condition. He's got to make sure all those things are perfect. Okay, and um, and so he doesn't have time to go and experiment with the latest, greatest, you know, whatever may maybe out there whereas i do you know and why do i go and say this i say this because so many traders don't make a decision whether or not they're trying to do this to make money or they're trying to do this because it's a hobby and you know make the decision make, you know make the commitment one way or the other and do what you got to do to either make money or you know if you just enjoy going and trading there's nothing wrong with that but understand that you probably at the end of the day you're not going you're going to be putting more money in than you're getting out <laughs> yeah and you know uh it made me think of something if you were to wake up or go out to, to tend to your chickens and one was dead that'd probably be an emotional or devastating thing right oh absolutely but if he woke up and went to tend to his chickens he's got twenty five thousands. if if he lost a couple it, it's almost like the cost of doing business right yeah you're exactly right you know now if he, every day he was going out there and it was starting to map up then he's going to get concerned but yeah i mean this once in a while thing of losing a chicken here or there he's not going to care you know he really isn't going to care you know, and I, you're exactly right. I know where you're going with this, so continue. <laughs> where am I going? Go where am I going? <laughs> where you're going with that is that, you know, when we are looking at our trading, what we need to be doing is looking at it and saying, hey, losses, they occur. They happen, and they shouldn't affect you because mm. they're going to occur. They're going to happen. Right. Now, the losses are going to stack up. 
well, then there's something to be concerned about. Uh, and, uh, and that's that's where we have to go and say, okay, what am I doing wrong? Take a step back. Okay, go back to fundamentals. You know, go back and, you know, in terms of the chicken farm, go back to you, whatever your agricultural plan was, whatever your business plan was, go back, make sure you're not violating things. Make sure there's not new elements that have crept into the market, you know, um, or crept into the farm. Well, we've got to do the same thing with, with, uh, with trading, you know. You just trade and you make money and, you know, it may be small, but you just keep on making money, keep on making money. And as you improve and your practices get better, they'll just get better as well. And you'll make more and more money. And when something goes wrong, okay, we can go and say, okay, that's not something to get emotional about. Things are going to go wrong. You know, the, as, the, as the expression goes, a fox every once in a while is going to get into the hen house. You're going to take <laughs> out a chicken or two. Right. You, know, you take them, you know, and then you, what do you do? Well, you, your plan should be somehow to go into the fox, go into the hen house and take care of the fox, right? right. Well, in trading, there may be something that's going on that maybe you have to take care of. And I'm going to say that, you know, sometimes those foxes in trading um, are things in the market, but more times than not, it's something that's going on inside your head. Yes, I would agree. And it's it's probably that, you know, is a lack or failure to uh, control the emotion. You, you have that response or you have that feeling and then, you know, your reaction needs to change is probably because yeah. we are human. So we are going to have an emotional, you know, reaction to things. But then uh, we have to control our physical reaction so we don't go into tilt mode. You're exactly right. You know, I mean, for example, I mean, today's been a crazy day, you know, and, um, you know, we had last hour 151 pips on the hour, at least on my charts, 151 pips on the hour. And that's actually the entire range for the day, you know. And you say, well, man, you could have made money on that. I mean, you know, I made, uh, let me just go look look up my thing here. Um, I'm up 35 pips for the day. Okay, that's that's not bad. That's a good day. In fact, it's a very good day. Um but there were a couple of times during the day where, um, or during that hour where I took a trade and I, t I, I told you TRO that I was up uh, like five, six pips on one particular trade and I got out with two, you know, and it happened to me not once, but twice it happened to me. And, you know, it just, it, it's just, do I get, should I get mad about that? You know? You know, I mean, there's no point in it, man. There's nothing I could have done to change it. I did follow my plan, and, you know, luckily, at least I was on the plus side, you know, but the thing is, it, there's nothing I could do about it. Now, here's the thing, though, talking about the fox in the hen house again. If this happens every single day, maybe it's start, time to start looking at the broker. Is the pro broker going and playing games? Or am I doing something more likely? Am I doing something wrong that I shouldn't be doing? You know, or is it just matter of circumstance? It just happens, you know. Uh, I was playing this was after that big news event that went and happened, you know. So guess what? My opinion, what really happened there was that it was a situation where it was just that's the that's that's the rules of the road at that point in time, you know. It was after a big news event. Yeah, I wasn't even close to even when the news actually dropped, but the market was still having some jitters and was still trying to sort things out a little bit. And so things like that are going to happen. So I just got to go and say, well, if you don't want that to happen, shame on me for even trading at that time, knowing that the, it's still a little close with such a huge move. We had a 150 pip move during an hour, you know, and you're sitting there and you're expecting the market to go and snap back to being completely normal. Well, the only one who's abnormal and all that is yourself because <laughs> of thinking something like that was going to happen. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but that's just, that's just my uh, two cents on that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you mentioned something and actually before you said it, I had showed the uh, traders uh, the range chart for the hour. We've got 131 on the hour and 131 on the day because actually that previous um, hour, the high was about one pip higher than the uh, than that that uh, last hour's high. So that's where we get right. that that one pip difference. But um, right. it is uh, pretty huge, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, we don't normally get no 
you know, norm, normally we don't get moves like that, but, you know, we got to remember what the news was. It was, you know, there was, the Brits came out with their monetary policy, you know, and uh, they increased it by another, what we would call in the U.S. 50 basis points, they just call it a half a percent. But the reality is the market was expecting, you know, uh, was expecting a, a little bit more than that. And that's what happens, you know. And when the market doesn't get what the market expects, <laughs> the market reacts. <laughs> hey, yeah, something just went weird on one of my brokers. Uh, the spread is like crazy. It's like three pips almost. And that's the one that wow. usually has like a one point spread. Something, something's weird here. Yeah, my my spread right now is about one point five. Well, what's happening but, is the ask is going up and the bid's not. It's really, really weird. Yeah. Wow, that's not happening on my broker. That shows you the difference between brokers. Well, I've got you know? I've got the broker I use for charting, and then I've got my other broker on the phone, and I'm looking at a six pip spread here. This is really weird. Wow, that's strange. Um, I right know. Now it, right now it's eight fifty. Uh, Eastern time, and there isn't any news coming out until ten thirty Eastern time. So I don't know. It's just strange stuff. What's going on right now? Yeah. Market's doing lots of strange things. And so when you're talking about money, um, the funny thing is actually I was in a trade, so I just punched out. But the difference, I've got a O six bid on my live account, and I've got a fifteen or a fifteen bid on this other account. So. I don't know why they're they're holding that spread. Okay, now that now it just corrected itself. Yeah. <laughs> now that's yeah, just funny. Odd. Yeah. I guess they just yep. didn't want me to take advantage of it cuz I was I <laughs> I was long at like 03 or something. Um it pulled it almost took me out on my stop loss, but then it, I I was pretty sure it was coming back, but man, they cheated me out of a bunch of pips by holding that spread down. Uh, and you know it's funny uh boys and girls and <laughs> non-binary traders walmart and i were talking before uh we started the video and i was saying that i think they're on to us that they don't want to give us because we've been one two pipping these guys to death i mean you know like what you said you're up 30 some pips for the day um yeah. you know he's putting a dent in their <laughs> he's basically eating their lunch putting a dent you know in their in their profits um and so well, I, don't, they, I don't think I am, but <laughs> I'm just a small guy out here, but, you know. I just can't believe, maybe I should, see, and this is one of those things where you've got emotions, and you've got reality, and you've got to manage the money, so, yeah, I'm bummed that I could had another 10 pips, but when something goes wrong, and you have an opportunity to get out, you've got to get out. And let things get back to normal because it just have easily could have slammed down the other way. Oh yeah, and then you, then you just been holding the bag and out a bunch of money. So you know when you talk about managing the money <laughs> or focusing on on money, that's one of the things you really have to do because you don't know what that next tick is going to do, and if if something is you know, out of whack, out of kilter, just off, and you have an opportunity to get out um, with the profit, especially, you need to get out. And even if you're at a loss and something weird like that, it's better just take that hit, let things right themselves, and then get right back in. And sure, sometimes you're going to wish you had stayed in, but it's better to wish you had stayed in than wishing to stayed out. It's kind of like <laughs> fastest 15 minutes in prepping, um, and prepping and trading's almost up. But I was going to give a little uh, prepping analogy. This one guy said, he goes, you know what? I've got all these preps and I got food and everything. He goes, if I'm wrong, I can eat my mistake. But if you're not prepared and you're wrong, what are you going to eat? <laughs> it's a totally different perspective. So, fellow traders, um, that's it. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to wrap this up. So I, I've got a favor to ask once again. If when you're watching the YouTube video, if you could just hit that like thumbs up. So maybe uh, YouTube will move me up in the algorithm um, because it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one over and out.